Hello everyone and thank you once again for uh, taking this time to join us online on the Aswara on Air Voice Clinic and yeah as we are getting back to our normal routine uh, a lot of people are working already and yeah it's 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 starting to look good but you know we still have to follow our SOPs because we know that there are new clusters just happening in the country these few days and we are all super worried about that well there's the good and and there's the bad and i know there are more people who, which are joining us uh, on uh, on facebook uh streaming today um and so yeah um and today i am very very excited yes so I am going to introduce to you my friend, Dr. Indra, uh, all the way from Germany. So he is a lecturer, he is a beatboxer, he's a choir leader, he's an arranger, and he's just an amazing friend, which, which we, we chat nearly every day, uh, exchanging uh, opinions, and views, and, and lots of things. And, and yeah, he's just an amazing guy, and uh, we are so fortunate to have him online today with us to share his knowledge on beatboxing. So, um, originally, I was going to go through uh, about the uh, through vocal folds body cover today, but I just realized that, you know, uh, there, there's, there's just so many things to talk uh, about beatboxing. And also today, Dr. Indra will also share with us uh, on an, an exciting workshop that he will be uh, offering. So I've decided to move uh, my session to uh, next week, in which I will cover then um, more of the physiology part. But today's uh, in today's session, um, we will be giving more time to Dr. Indra to talk about beatboxing. And also, I'm also excited because my good friend Rial, who's also a beatboxer, is online uh, today. Yes, and so we will be going through and because uh, Dr. Indra himself has done um, the works of Joe S. Steele. So, so he will be um, uh, integrating all those into our session today. So if you have joined us uh, right from uh, our past sessions and you, if you have any questions on uh, anything that we've discussed in the past, um, we can all, you can also ask it again as a revision. Yeah, because learning the physiology of the voice isn't something that you just learn in five days and just go. It is something which doctors learn it for five years and then they will still have to go in and do their, their what do you call I think Hasrik will know that, what house mentioned, I think, for another two years or so and then go and do their specialization in their ENTs and so on. So if doctors take more than seven yes. years to, to get that specialization, so it is really impossible for anyone to master it within five days. So don't get overwhelmed. It takes a long time and practice and, and working with a mentor uh, or a teacher that trusts the work. So without further ado, uh, let us welcome Dr. Indra all the way from Germany to, uh, with his topic of discussion. Uh, welcome. Like frozen in, in in my picture. Ah, now, now, now we can see you. And also viewers at home, um, I am watching. Okay, I'm sorry that I was freezing because... <laughs> yes, we can hear you. So something seems to be with the connection. Yeah, it could be because it's very, very heavy. All right, so... Yeah. yeah, so I think maybe I'm just going to start. Um, so thank you very much. Also, thank you to Dr. Casey for inviting me um, today to talk about beatboxing and you know about things that you can do with your voice that are maybe not normal singing, <laughs> so to say. So thank you. My name is Indra Tejasukmana. I live in Germany. And yes, I work with choirs, with singers, and I started beatboxing when I was a teenager. So first, what is beatboxing? Well, beatboxing is basically, you know, making drum sounds and making beats with your mouth. So, of course, I am not 
warmed up and I have no idea how my microphone quality sounds, but I will try to do just a few short sounds for you to listen. Uh, I know we have also other beatboxes here today, so this is not a battle, but <laughs> merely a, a short demonstration. So I'll do some, some of the, you know, some rhythms and sounds. So beatboxing, okay. You know, so <laughs> I hope that you could hear a <laughs> So I hope it was possible for some of you to hear a few of that sounds. Um, and now what I will try to do, I hope it works, is I want to share my screen with you. I think I'm gonna try that. Yes. So if everything works, you should see the first of my slides, which just says the phonetics of beatboxing. You see that? Uh huh. Yes, we see it clearly. Yeah. It's working. Right. So first, you know, what is beatboxing? And we've talked a little bit about this. So basically beatboxing is just making drum sounds with your mouth and your voice and also sometimes effect. And here comes the first thing. So beatboxing, the classical beatboxing does not use the voice. So it's only the mouth part. But in the last maybe 10 years or a little bit more, beatboxers have been doing crazy stuff like singing and beatboxing at the same time or mixing singing notes with beatboxing. So then you can use your voice too. So it always depends what you want to do if you use the voice or not. And some people also know beatboxing, you know, with some other words like vocal percussion or mouth percussion or, you know, vocal drumming. So there's different terms. And of course, how do you, you know, beatboxing is not only solo in hip hop, but also you can use it for vocal ensembles and, and, you know, when you sing modern music, which is what I use it often for to make a choir, you know, sound like an, like a band. So it gives a certain extra rhythm in, in the modern music. So um, just a quick look, I'm trying to make it not too theoretical, but uh, just to have an overview. So beatboxing started basically in the 1980s in America. And yes, it, it comes from hip hop. So basically when beatboxing was first done, it was just to be like kind of a rhythmic um, fundament for the rappers. So somebody was rapping and then there was like a beat under that, right? And so when we look like at the first beatboxers, you can see that they are so cool. You know, they look so, so urban and cool. <laughs> I'm not that cool. But so these were like the first hip hop people who brought beatboxing into the mainstream. And also one thing that's interesting about hip hop is if you look at the names, you know, Buffy, Scratch, Click. So oftentimes they did not use their real <laughs> names, but they were like... Um, they had this AKAs, right? Like these hip hop names. So that is where beatboxing comes from, from the streets. And we're gonna, uh, oh, sorry. We, now there was already the sound. So we're gonna be listening to one example from the 1980s. So this is actually 1986. And it's a female rapper with a male beatboxer. And we listen to that. I'm Sean K and the rhymes of death. This rap so fresh till I get out of breath. Now this is something that we do have to do. And this is a team that I must introduce. I'm Shantae, he's Bismarcky. We rap so fresh that they think it's three. Three of us who rap together. Strong as a bond that is tougher than leather. My name is Shantae and yes, I'm pop choice. And you can tell by the sound of my voice that the way that I rock that I am the best. Higher than the rest. Plus this shit is fresh. Threw on my feelers and my feelers suit. Stepped out my house, I just knew I was cheap. Bumped into busy, had a feelers too. I said, yo, Biz Marky, what you wanna do? Yes, so that is, um, that's an example from 1986. And as you could hear, so there was the rapping part and then the beat was simply, it was a pretty simple beat, but it added an energy, right? Mm -hmm. So 
let's talk about the sounds of beatboxing because now we get a little bit more into what beatboxing actually is. So, first of all, beatboxing imitates drum sounds, right? So we have a beat. Then, <laughs> so this thing actually in the left, um, it so this is actually a, a real beatbox. Like the word beatbox mm -hmm. was just an electronic box that, you know, could produce beats. And this one you can see is released, uh, was released in the, I think, 1972 or something. Like, really, I, I wasn't even born, you know. But, wow, so, 1972. Yes, this is by, by a... Yeah, and so, the, you know, the company name is Roland or Roland. Uh -huh, so okay. they do um, synthesizers today. And you have to think that this kind of equipment was really expensive. So many, many musicians could not buy it. So, but because they wanted to have the same beats, they started imitating this box with their mouth. How clever. Yeah, so actually beatboxing, if you think about it, really was born out of, um, how do you say, out of a necessity because people were too poor to buy the actual beatbox. So then we have the scratching sounds, you know, everything with the, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, and also like effects, electronic stuff, you know, like, I don't know, this, you know, all, all kind of filters and stuff. So these four um, categories basically comprise, you know, the basics of beatboxing. Now that we have ta uh, looked at this um, at this set of sounds, um, we can come to uh, beatboxing and vocal science. So we know beatboxing uh, persons who do drums with their voice, but actually a lot of things is still unknown about beatboxing because you know beatboxing came from the art from the streets not from a medical speech pathology mm -hmm. so only in the last years people have been you know starting to look at oh what ha what's happening inside the mouth and as you could guess it's really really difficult to to find that out why is this difficult well because beatboxing is pretty fast and you need some kind of it's hard to look like into the throat while beatboxing three, three cameras isn't it because it involves the filters way up here and also down here and and up yes so oh, beatboxing yeah so if if we talk about you know f power source and filter mm -hmm. actually beatboxing uses all three of them but like in a really Com um, complex and fast way so that is why it is hard to explain but we will do our best <laughs> so <laughs> so actually beatboxing became like a separate part of my doctoral dissertation where I tried to you know explain some of the uh, uh, basics and so many people because there's different kinds of doctors i'm doing the so-called doctor of musical arts so it has a lot to do with music i'm not a medical doctor but I, uh, there's some overlap of course between vocal science and medical science but i'm not a medical doctor but i try my best to describe it in a way that musicians can use it mm -hmm. so let's take a look at the actual physiology of beatboxing and here I like this picture actually very much. This is from the Acoustic Institute of Vienna, where they do like really good research on, you know, what is used in the body to sing and to speak. Now, this is all German, of course, and so you don't need to understand all the German words. But so if we look at it, we have the cortex, of course, the brain. Yeah. And then this thing here, vocal tract, is basically the resonators, like all the cavities and holes and, you know, everything where the sound resonates. So then the word Atmung is just breathing. Stimm, Ritze is glottis, like the, the larynx, basically. And now for beatboxing, I found out that we use mainly the articulators. And articulator is the same thing that we use as filter. So let's look at these filters that you will remember this. So first we have the velum here. It's called palette, but it's like the, you know, the upper, uh, which is here in yellow and the velum. I will also make it practical. You can use it for sounds like 
<coughs> you know, so that's like the sound of my <coughs> of my um, of the velum uh, kind of hitting against the the roof, uh, not the roof, sorry, the the wall of the the th the pharynx. So <coughs> then we have the tongue. So because the position of the tongue, when you alter that, you alter the whole sound. For example, if I do this or so I'm making one sound but my tongue is filtering the frequencies out so the tongue is very important in beatboxing now in a still I believe that there's no like real figure for teeth right no. because the teeth are something that you don't really you know you can't just you know move them but in beatboxing they still have an important function because if I do this So all this ticka ticka ticka, it's basically the tongue hitting against the teeth. So the teeth have a really important job in beatboxing. So it's important to, well, first it's important to, to you know, just have teeth. I mean, <laughs> you know, clean them and everything. But, uh, <laughs> and then there's the lips, of course, because all the sounds that you exhale, like, you know, this is all done with the pressure of the lips. Now the last thing is actually pretty passive in beatboxing because the jaw, if you look at me beatboxing from the side, so my jaw has different positions, but it's it's being moved by the lip by the pressure of the lips. So this you can see the filter is the main thing that the beatboxer uses. And that is also one important reason why beatboxing is not bad for your voice. Actually, I was having a discussion with an ENT doctor a few years ago. She's from Great Britain. And she wanted to find out if beatboxing actually hurts the voice. And it, it can hurt the voice if you do it wrong. But then, if you sing in a wrong way, you can also hurt your voice. So it doesn't really hurt the voice per se, you know, like from a... So, okay, so this is the articulators. Now, uh, this uh, is from a study that was done in Sweden, or actually it was done in America, but presented in Stockholm. So you can see here, the professors found out that the main articulators really are what I just told you, velum, tongue, lips, glottis. So this was the name of the study. Um, <laughs> it has a long name, like most vocal science stuff. <laughs> You know comparison of basic beatboxing so what they did is they took beatboxers and they they put them in this magnetic resonance so they were like lying down in this tube and while they were beatboxing they were scanning like their brain functions and their larynx and everything um okay now we know what beatboxing is we know it comes from hip-hop we know the art the filter plays a big role how to notate beatbox because you might be singing in a choir and saying oh but Indra is talking about beatboxing but how can I actually use it for myself and for my choir so there's two ways the first one is really the simple one I use it a lot is you write down letters and the second one if you're like a medical person you need a phonetic alphabet for the really detailed description now Let's first look at the phonetic alphabet. I don't know who of you studied linguistics. I'm just gonna like keep coming these things in. But what you are seeing now is just the phonetic names for, um, oh, sorry, for, for the different kinds of sounds that we as humans can create. So the airstream consonants, for example, these are called airstream because they they produce the sound from the incoming air. And for example, in beatbox, you can use them for making this electronic dance music. So all of the you know, so airstream consonants are good for creating this swooshy air-like sound. Also, if you're a choir and you don't want to beatbox, but you have a song about nature, about the water, about the waves, you can do like a, I had this once, like a children's choir, they were doing like from left to right. And the public was like, oh my God, we, we've never heard this. You know, it's it, just like contemporary composition. So you can use these sounds to create new sound worlds. Okay, now the explosive consonants are the most important because, you know, 
G. I mean, this already screams for beatboxing because it, it's so percussive, right? Um, so let's go to the voice syllables. You have V, J, R, or you have M, N, uh, mm. So these are not really used for beatboxing because they're just for normal speaking. But the fricative sounds, you know, pff, tss, 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 tss. So beatboxing, if you filter everything you see now, you get basically to three um, three different categories. The first are the explosive consonants, p, t, k, b, d, g. Then you have the airstream, ch, s, kh, th, you know, everything with air. And then you have the fricatives. Which is like they um, they create friction, which is why they're called fricatives. So P and F. Pff. And now this is the part where it gets a little more practical. So now we can actually try to beatbox. Every one of you, you can keep your microphone muted. Actually, you should keep your microphone muted. But so let's take a look at the bass drum, right? So the bass drum, I will always write with a B. And it's a soft, explosive consonant and voiced. So what does that mean? So first, if you speak a normal B, like B, 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 just do it for yourself, you know, just like B, 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 B. Now, if you put a lot of pressure onto your lips, not the throat, the lips, and then you lower your voice, then it becomes B, B. So it's two sounds. The first sound is just the lips, and the second is like a grunt, like a M, mm, M. Mm. And this combined, the this P sound with an M mm is mm, mm, mm. Of course, with female voices, it will sound a little bit higher, maybe like mm, mm, mm. But you can still use it as a beatbox bass drum. It works if you use a microphone. So that's the first part, right? To, to have the B. Mm, mm. Now let's look at the hi-hat. So hi-hat is this kind of and this one is pretty simple because it's just a TS, you know, so if you do t, t, like I say, I don't know, it's, uh, which words do we have with the TS? Um, I, I don't know, but like, like a short TS. T, t, t. And then you can do it in a rhythm. With me. So the hi-hat is important, uh, for, for example, for jazz, because many people say, oh, but, you know, Indra, uh, it's only a TS, what can I do with it? I'll tell you what you can do with it. If you do something show or, or you know, jazz style, in jazz you all um, often have this thing called walking bass. What is a walking bass? It's when the bass singer does this You know, so the bass does this walking line. Now, if you add the hi-hat sound to it, it sounds like this. So I do it in very slow. It's actually dm for the tone, like dm, dm, and then tsm, like the ts with an m. So you combine this. So it sounds as if it's the same. And that way you can create this percussive feeling and you can have and you can use it as a real basis for this a cappella jazz. So that is how a cappella jazz works actually. Okay, let's get to the last basic sound which is the snare drum. Um, this one for some people it's easy, for me it was really hard to learn. Um, so it's a P with a really lot of pressure, P, and then you have an F. So the P plus the F is So you, you're kind of stringing together and binding together the P with the F. First comes the, the P is when you hit the snare drum with the stick, and the F is actually the resonance of the, of the skin. And do not fret if it doesn't work for the first time, like we're all trying out, right? So now we can combine all of this, like the B and the TS and the PF. And then you have... And of course, 
by the time you progress even like the really 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 good beatboxers like i think that real is one so if you see beatboxing at a, like a high level when you do like that's all everything i've just done is basically just syllables and letters but like strung together in a way that makes it sound fast and the only way to get there is actually practice 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 it's the same if you practice piano or violin it you know many people think oh beatboxing is so cool but but i want to learn it yeah but it's this you need to learn it with the same dedication and determination and power as if you learn any classical instrument that's the only way i would love to tell you something different but but i can't <laughs> so oh okay so now uh, this is just a little bit of a still but basically if you want to sing healthy but also if you want to beatbox healthy um it's important to beatbox in a mid way or retract now what is mid and retract as uh, dr casey said really correct this is maybe for me the most difficult part to teach my students right so i'm teaching students at university and always when they ask you but how, what is retraction it's it's always tricky but so the first thing you must remember is that if you look here at this vocal folds uh, actually yeah, so, <laughs> but actually so there's the, the 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 wrong vocal folds if you press into your throat then the upper part will move down and inwards so like if you imagine you lift something heavy you can do that you lift and then you may and now this kind of voice this is constricted so that's what we don't want for beatboxing if you beatbox there's already enough pressure in the mouth don't use pressure also for the voice right so in other words how to retract while beatboxing pretty simple be relaxed think of something uh comfortable stand in a just very normal way and if you notice that you are tense your muscle your shoulders your uh, then make take a break try to do uh, you know uh, just do this thing in your hand with the uh, open open r and then this opening just helps to retract right um so retraction or mid mid position is if we're talking normally yeah um, but just we don't want to constrict. That's the first thing we don't want to. So here we have actually a picture I found which is pretty cool because if you do too much um, constriction, you can see that the red parts here, the muscles, um, they get, I think it's called inflammation in English. So you, you, you can really damage your voice by putting constant pressure. I think Peng and Rudd also talked about this, which is then called tension dysphonia or, you know, muscle tension. So there's different stuff. So always when you beatbox, relax. And if you think it's too much pressure and the throat hurts, take a break. Now, let's take a look at gender and age in beatboxing, because this is something that people always ask me in workshops is if it's important if you're a girl or a boy or you know and and also if it's possible for children to beatbox so i did a little research um and so this what you can see uh, on the left side is that scientists in at the university of i think it's california they compared the beatboxing action of men women uh, but not only men and women but if you can see expert beatboxer intermediate beatboxer and novice beatboxers and they tried to find out if there is a difference and as you can read there was no discernible difference between genders which is also logical because men and women we might be different in some ways but when it's about the speaking and singing we basically use the same structure even though the you know the i don't know the height or the cavity so but that's good to know because I I have met many girls and women who said, oh, we, we want to beatbox, but we kind of feel inferior to men already in the societal structure, but maybe we cannot beatbox. And I always tell them, but there's no reason why you should not beatbox, right? If it's an artistic vision, if you can use it, of course. So that is that. Now, <laughs> beatboxing for children is always, oh man, people get so, oh, but it's, it's, it's uh, uh, dangerous for children because so much pressure on the throat. So this is actually a video from the Sesame Street. Maybe you know the children show Sesame Street from America. Let's just watch 
Uh, just a minute. Hi, I'm Maya. Oh, and Elmo's Elmo. <laughs> Today, me and Elmo are going to show you how to beatbox. That's right, baby. <laughs> so first, you have to remember this phrase, boots and cats. Boots and cats? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's silly. What do boots and cats have to do with beatboxing? <laughs> <laughs> so then you emphasize the consonant letters like this. And oh. then you repeat. Okay, let Emma try. Boots, cats, boots, cats, boots, cats, boots, cats. Oh, wow. That's cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a lost to beatbox. Let's do it again. Yeah, so <laughs> so and I thought this was really cute because if you listen to the girl, I don't know how old she is. Actually, she's Asian American, I think. Um, but she, yeah, it. it like she, it sounds soft and it sounds not so powerful. Like you know, when like a grown-up two meters black beatboxer does it, but that's not the point. So it is possible to even use their laryngeal structures to create beats, as long as we do not pressure them into you know having to have the same volume and impact. But you know, as she gets older and she will be 15, 16, and like the structures evolve, then also the volume will will evolve. But yeah, she does it in a healthy way, and you can also hear that um, as long as she's able to speak normally after that, that's a good sign. So again, be, and it's the same with, with singing, actually. People in Germany, I don't know how it's in Malaysia, like, you know, you have vocal teachers arguing over what is the best age to start singing. Um, and I don't know, like, like you know, my girlfriend, she, she began singing at a really young age, but like in, in a professional children's choir. And I think it's always about the quality of the choir leader and how they understand the voices. So let's see, what um, what do we have? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> actually, I, d I don't want to make like a commercial, but I wrote a book about beatboxing. Actually, it's also translated in English. If it's OK, Dr. Casey, can I just show the picture <laughs> one time? Okay, because I, I really don't want to like make the impression that I'm going to sell something here. But let me just, um, so you will see my face for 10 seconds, not, but then again, I'm just going to get the book. So. Okay, so actually this is Beatbox Complete, but you can, well, you can also see it in the thing. So if you type in Beatbox Complete on Amazon, you can also find the English version. And that is actually a book where together with a friend of mine, we tried to 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 make a teaching book also with the DVD. And on the DVD, there's hundreds of video clips of me beatboxing. So you can see how you actually notate beatboxing for choral or a cappella music, right? Mm -hmm. So we have here two systems. The first system is the, the five different, uh, how you say, like the five note lines. And then for Latin percussion, you have only one note line because there's only deep and high, right? So if you have bongos or conga on the left side, so you have so it's kind of a singing percussion, right? Well, and this is actually how beatboxing looks like if you, yeah, if you want to do it with a notation, like uh, for example, 61A is just a simple you know, like rock music. And ultimately, this is what it looks like in a choral setting. So you see that the tenor here has this whispering sound, this shh, because I wanted to make them a wave sound. And here in the real beatbox part, you have the t, 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 t. And you can see I even put the, how do you say, the accent on it. So you can say which part has to be louder and not. And so the beatbox part um, is, yeah, so I use it a lot for pop music and rock music. Now, everything I've said, of course, of course, you can make pop and jazz without beatbox. That's absolutely a problem. But if you want to have like a real modern cutting edge sound, and I'm seeing this more and more young choirs are actually using it, you can use this, right? Oh, and actually, so this is <laughs> what I also wanted to talk about. So, um, oh, do you want, Dr. Casey, do you want to first say something? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, you know, remember I was I was mentioning that, that, that Dr. Indra will be doing um, 
um, uh, workshop series. So this this is something that um, I think um, you guys should um, should take up because it's very very interest uh, very very interesting. And and you know what you know what I think I'm going to order that book from from Amazon. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I, so I, um, I have have you to autograph that book. <laughs> yes, I actually uh, have some. I think I even have some English uh, ex exemplaries left in in my like in my uh, uh, room. So I might give also that. <laughs> so I'm doing actually now in the summer, like in July and August, I will be doing a series of workshops, or not workshops, but it's like an online seminar, and it is about the history of pop and jazz a cappella music. So what does that mean? It means it takes about 90 minutes to two hours maximum. And in these two hours, we will together explore the development of pop and jazz a cappella outside of the classical world. So we're going to watch videos and, and MP3s, music, listen to music of the most important American and European pop and jazz groups. And also looking at how to arrange this style, how to sing this style, which chords and which melodies are typical for which time you know like because jazz from the 1930s is different from jazz from the 1970s so if you do that with me after that you will have a better understanding of how to sing this music with your choir because you will understand that there's not only pop and jazz but you will understand the the still stylistical decisions that you can make what is old school what is modern what is fitting for a certain competition or category and also what is difficult and what can be used for children so all of that we're going to be diving in to give you a better understanding and you can also ask questions then about about this development because i you know i i meet many choirs and i'm lucky enough and so thankful to life and to god that i could travel the whole world with a cappella with my bands i have a professional group i've been all over the world and always people tell me that they're interested in this more modern style but they don't really know the roots the history how, where it comes from so we're going to be looking at everything of that so you can see that there's a fee of 10 euro i hope i c calculated that right i try to make a price that is fair that is affordable maybe also for music schools for students for teachers for choir leaders so please uh, i think dr casey can send this picture and also the teaser yeah. video share it with your friends because that is uh, my big uh, passion and love and also what i make a living of and i'm just so happy to 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 share this with all of we you we will send it to all of you uh in in the whatsapp uh whatsapp uh link that that we have and and um Tell your friends, especially those of you who are studying music, you know, because these days if you're talking about, well, if you're, I mean, some of my friends that, that uh, I mean, or, or students who say that, you know, classical, you're studying dead man's music. But we, if you're talking about pop <laughs> and jazz, it is well alive. It's well alive now. And, you know, because the trends, uh, it keeps on changing. And Dr. Indra is one of them who are in the industry now who is who is an arranger he's a practitioner himself so um this would be really a good opportunity to to hop into this lecture class because it's an enrichment for you um to actually it, it within one session you'll know about the history of jazz and and in those of you who are in especially in the conservatories who are doing your your music studies hey this is like an extra tuition for you and uh, it will help you in your examinations and and so on and i i know i'm gonna be there uh so <laughs> Yes, and thank you so much. And it's true. So, you know, this kind of stuff, what I'd be doing in the in the online seminar, I guarantee you that there is only very, very few music academies and music universities where they'll be teaching this. So because I studied music myself and I learned a lot about classical, a little bit about pop and jazz, but like this specialization in vocal and choral, all of my teachers and professors, they said, oh, yeah, yeah, choral music. Hmm, that's special. So <laughs> then I thought, okay, well, then I'm going to do the doctor about this topic. So so thank you very much for, you know, uh, Dr. Casey, for allowing me to be here and also for everyone who listened today. 
and maybe you have some questions. Most welcome, Dr. Indra. <laughs> so, um, we will take in questions um, soon. So, before this, let's uh, listen to some words from our sponsors. And when you, if you have any questions, we will be uh, happy to take your questions after these words. Thank you to Aswara for making this uh, platform uh, available for us to share and this voice clinic has been happening since um, the first week of June, um, oh no, May, sorry, May, June and now it's July and it will go on until the end of uh, September. So yeah, so thank you very much. So um, we are ready to uh, take some questions uh, and I've, I'm also displaying here um, uh, the information for Dr. Indra if any of you would like to be in touch because it's maybe some of you might be thinking of having online beatboxing lessons or jazz lessons. So <laughs> he's the man, you can be in touch and now, well, um, because of this uh, new normal, we are all having lessons online and, and so on. So it's really uh, very available for you to take whatever lessons you want. So uh, do we have any questions? Yes, I, I, got, oh, I got a question. So sorry. OK, so Hazrik, uh, a question? OK, hi, Dr. Casey, Dr. Indra, and everyone. I would like to ask one question for Dr. Indra. Yeah. How do you see beatboxing in the future? Yeah. So beatboxing in the future, I think that which each generation of beatboxers, they become better and better and better. So what I mean is I am now 36 and I started when I was 14. And when I started beatboxing, I won like really big competitions where many people, you know, the press wrote about me, stuff like I would be one of the best and stuff. But now today, there's like 12 year old kids who I cannot compare to their level because they are so good. So I think the artistic level will be much better with each new generation. And I think that it will become a bigger part of music culture and even I think that at some point you can study beatbox at music university as a real subject. That is already in Europe the case in Finland where I studied at the Sibelius Academy. You can major in master of music with beatboxing, which is crazy. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Yes, from Riel. Yes, Riel. Oh yeah, Riel. Hello, Dr. Indra. Okay, uh, my, mine's kind of a two-part question. The first question is, in a choir, uh, would one beatboxer suffice or would you have maybe two beatboxers where you can layer different beats and different patterns? The second mm -hmm. question is that uh, I notice you give a lot of outward, uh, outward sounds during this, mm -hmm. but do you also suggest a lot of inward sounds? For example, a lot of the case that's the... <laughs> 
and all that it's all inward would you yeah. suggest that as well yes great questions thank you so first let's talk about beatboxing in a choir because now so the choir is on stage and so what are you going to do uh, so I have experimented a lot like you know I had 15 people beatboxing then only one with microphone without microphone and I, I just tested and I made so many mistakes that today I know a hundred ways to not do it <laughs> correctly but I would say if you can have one person do the beatboxing but with a microphone and here comes a big problem because many choirs if, uh, mostly also the classical choirs they tell me oh no 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 please don't start with mixing and microphone we don't want anything to do with it we just want like the you know the acoustic choir and I understand that so now today because we live in 2020 there's the possibility that there is this kind of I don't know what the name is it's like a box like an am amplifier box like for guitar but you can use it just for one person for singing but you can also beatbox so if you have a choir and you don't want to invest in like a big sound stage but just buy one of these um co compact what's mobile about, what's about yeah this? yeah yeah i think so and then you can use that for beatbox and because you only have one person one person is only in charge of the tempo so it can't mess up with different person's tempos but sometimes if it's a latin piece for example what what do i mean by latin if you have samba bossa nova kub salsa you know like this so the percussion exists in different layers so you have one person only doing and the next person only doing and the third person ding, 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 and together like, ding, 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 ding. so you can lay the percussion but you could only give it to the persons who you know you can trust because they really can keep the tempo so the beatboxer even no matter if it's child or woman or man they have to be very certain of the tempo if not you cannot use it uh, so that's the first sorry that that's the first question the second part is in beatboxing there's exhaling sounds and inhaling you also call, call it outwards or inwards so if i do this so this is a k based sound with a k but outwards the air is going out you can also do it do it inwards so you, you can um so for each sound you can basically decide if you want to spit air outwards or suck it inwards for me personally it feels natural to produce the sound in the body and give it to the open air if i do this then through the air inhaling i feel a little bit um sick right like if i do this too much I, it makes me feel like i want to throw up I, it, I know it doesn't sound very pretty but so it's always a, a matter of what you feel like many beatboxers love this feeling of of do something inwards then you can use that but from a now again i'm not a medical doctor but i have talked to medical doctors and they say also it's more natural to give something to the outside than to because if you suck the air inwards then what happens you need a good system to not over breathe and then you have like a full tummy or something you know or or, or like the lungs in that part so you can do it both ways, but I just chose to do it outwards simply because it feels better to me, right? That's very individual, right? Thank you. Yes. Do you have any <laughs> other questions from anyone? Right. Uh, what, what's, oh, sorry. Yes, yes, go ahead, Ariel. No, I just want to know what is the classical, uh, uh, people who, who practice classical music, so when you want to interweave uh, beatboxing and the, the genres that come with beatboxing, like trap music yes. and, and techno and all that, what is their initial perception of it? So I just want to know, like if you were to introduce this to a classical choir. Yeah, um, actually, it's, this is a good topic because in Germany, you know, where I live, I'm actually doing quite on a regular basis this kind of crossover project. For example, I will beatbox, but then the Baroque choir will be singing Johann Sebastian Bach, you know. So uh, sometimes I'm just writing the choirs an email and, you know, I will introduce myself and say, hey, my name is Indra. And I think that if you're interested, we could do something cool for your next concert where we work together and just, you know, bring different musical elements 
together. And then, as you say, sometimes the the choirs or the choir leaders are a bit more traditional and they say, ah, oh, no, 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 that it doesn't really fit. We just want to be in our serious classical world. But that is also okay. I'm not judging them, right? Like, I understand that beatboxing, you don't have to mix it up with everything. But sometimes people also say, oh, hey, yes, I actually, he wrote me and, and why not? Let's do it. And so I have been doing collaborations with classical orchestras, with overtone singers, with rappers, with children's dance companies. So just, you know, you can use beatboxing in whatever creative way you want to, as long as people have an open mind. If they are not open minded, then, of course, this cannot work because you need trust for a mutual project. But um, and I try when people cancel this, you know, saying when people say, say oh, no. Some people even say, oh, beatboxing is not real music. I try to not let it affect me too negatively because I feel that sometimes life is too short to be, you know, hanging yourself up on the negative experiences. But that's the way I go about it. Yeah. Cool. Do we have any other, uh, anyone, any other questions? All right. So All right. If, there, if there are no questions, now here's something for you. Um, when August starts, we will be moving into the fun part of um, the singing part or the practical part where we will be introducing to you the different voice qualities. So next week, we will go through two of the, uh, the last figures. And then in August, we will start the fun part. So we will be introducing to you a few voice qualities and we would like you to participate. We would like you to sing or to, to even do your speech and drama thing in which um, several of my colleagues uh, will be online. Uh, of course, we have um, Dr. Indra there if, if the time um, uh, matches as, as well. And uh, of course, I will invite some of my colleagues who are available. So um, the, on the first week of August, we will be looking at speech quality. Uh, you might not know what speech quality is at the moment, but here are some songs that can, uh, you can think about if you want to sing. Uh, maybe you could take a pop song or a musical theater song. Um, yeah, those two will be will be quite uh, suitable for it. Or maybe even if you want uh, to take a jazz song, but I would strongly recommend a musical theater or uh, a, a pop song. So if you want to sing in that masterclass, what you got to prepare is that you got to uh, text us uh, in that that number. I think is zero one seven two nine one six one six zero. I repeat zero one seven two nine one six one six zero. And if you're from overseas, it's plus six. Yeah, so it's. It's plus six zero one seven two nine one six one six zero, and tell us that you want to sing because um, we will not be able to take um, everyone, but we will be able to do on like a first come first serve uh, basis, and where you can sing a song, and we will help you masterclass that song um, to to what we have learned. So you. Now, let me emphasize on this. It doesn't have to be perfect because if it is perfect, then we don't need to masterclass because the whole purpose of the masterclass is for us to help you overcome certain issues. So we are really not looking for the most perfect singing because if it's the most perfect singing, we'll have a different platform for you to, to showcase. So, um, if, but if you have something, and, and this is not something for, for anyone to make fun about because all of us will have something that we need to work on, even all, all trainers as well. Even, even, even for me, I keep learning all the time and during this MCO I've been taking lessons uh, from uh, all sorts of things. I, I take about three or four language lessons online with, with teachers in Europe. Yes, I do that uh, until even midnight 1 a.m. I, I do I do that. Um, I do several other lessons as well and I travel a lot to Australia to meet my, my mentors and so on because learning never stops. So don't be don't be afraid, don't be ashamed uh, if if uh, for for the master class we want to hear you and bring us that problem in the singing or that situation or something that you want to ask and and we could uh, my my colleagues and I will be more than happy to work that out with you and or for choral directors out there 
if you have this situation, I know it's impossible to bring the, the entire choir on, uh, on Zoom, but what you can do is play for us the recording online and ask us, hey, this is what is happening in, in, in my choir and I want to do this and how can it be done. So let's think out of the box and, and see what's available. So I encourage every one of you to, to uh, participate and... Um, yeah, and, and finally, after three months, then in August, now we can put everything uh, to, to use here. Yeah? And don't worry if, if you do not understand things from the past because let us know and we will be revising and, and helping you because, again, the physiology of the voice and voice science isn't something that you just read and know it immediately. You've got to practice. You've got to work with someone who understands um, the, the voice model of, of what you're doing and a person that could relate to what you want. So, you know, it, it, it's just to, uh, yeah, having two people that, that can work together. So don't be intimidated by, by voice science. I know three months is a lot of time. Maybe some people are thinking, what in the world have I been learning for three weeks? I mean, for, for three months, learning only sounds and muscles. Hey, before you learn how to cook that, that lovely, lovely chicken curry, you've got to learn how to cut your, uh, dice your potatoes, how to select the right chicken, the fresh chicken, and not, not uh, ayam penchen. And then you have to, you also know how to do tumbo your bawang and, and so on. So, uh, yeah, all, all those things. So, hey, if people have to learn all those and go for cooking classes and, and that. and So, it's also the same thing for, for the voice. Don't, don't just think, I'll read it from the books and, and I'll, I'll know it. Come on the master class, sing for us. I promise we won't laugh at, we, we, we won't laugh at, at you. We are here to help. So, tell your friends it's not too late and uh, be, we, be in touch with, with us and also we have, we have some uh, steel colleagues here as I can see another colleague of ours, Metro, Metropoly uh, Tan is here Hello! So, so I know Metropoly is also another uh, steel teacher also so perhaps if he's online as well he can share his expertise as, as well to, to help out you know uh, and we are all in this same family together to explore this voice science. So it is something that I look forward to and I can't wait for August, but I have to finish that one uh, next week on, on two more things which we'll cover about the, the true vocal folds, body cover, and then we'll talk about the head, head, um, head, uh, head and neck and, and torso. We'll try to make it as brief and, and simple as possible. And we'll, we also have uh, Miss Siri Rad next week in which she will talk about children voices. So for those of you who have children and so on, you will be delighted to, to hear from, from her about children voices, how you take care of children voices and how to, how to know when it's a uh, full limit and so on. And as usual, if you have any questions, you want us to talk about any topic at all, please feel free to write to me at drcaseybroadway at gmail.com. You can go on to my, my Facebook, Dr. Casey Broadway, and you can also go on to my uh, Instagram or my YouTube channel. It's all the same thing under Dr. Casey Broadway, and I upload all these videos, and you can watch it at any time. It's free for you. Knowledge is to be shared and um, yeah, and we're happy to do so. And so thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Dr. Indra, for your time. Uh, and thank you, everyone. And I wish everyone to be safe. Remember, follow the SOP. The latest thing we heard, we see in the newspaper is that wear your mask or find 1,000 ringgit or jail term. Mm. Yes, that's the way to go about it. Bravo! Uh, I strongly support it. Uh, yeah. So take take care, everyone, and stay safe and God bless. Bye bye. Terima kasih. Bye bye. Sama sama.